I expect oil prices in general to drop to the 50s or the 60s. And here's why. Number one, there is a war for market share. Russia and Iran are selling cheap oil to India and China. Basically, they're capping the prices. The Saudis cut production. They want to get those oil prices up. They want to squeeze all the shorts. The problem is you have Russia and you have Iran selling cheap oil. Onloading supply at such a cheap price, Saudi Arabia, if they keep cutting production, they're basically giving market share over to Iran and Russia. A war for that market share means Saudis have to start pumping again. Oil prices are going lower, i.e. inflation. Number two, manufacturing is still in recession territory and it doesn't look like it's rebounding anytime soon. The U.S., Europe, and Japan, all in negative territory. You look at Western Europe and what are we seeing? Germany, UK, France, same thing. China, Taiwan, South Korea, negative territory, leading us to lower demand for oil. We're seeing basically a contraction happen in the manufacturing sector. And the third wave is secular. The third wave is basically this virtualization of the economy, right? Zoom, Google Meets, Microsoft Teams, social meetups online, right? Discord, Facebook, Twitter. In general, business and social meetups are becoming more virtual. That's less travel. That's less demand for oil over time. We're headed for this deep recession. Everything's going to collapse. We are still at historic lows in unemployment. Unemployment is not spiking yet. People still have jobs. There's still payroll. Now let's turn to the consumer. Incomes are still positive. The savings rate is still positive. Spending month over month actually went lower. People are bracing for recession. The service economy is still expanding. U.S. housing sales are starting to bottom. We're seeing this bottoming effect, right, in existing home sales and new home sales. Home builder sentiment has bottomed. Building permits are starting to bounce. Home builders are building. Don't get me wrong, we're in recession territory, but, you know, when you look deeper into the data, it is starting to bounce. Just because GDP is falling, this is the growth rate of GDP, doesn't mean you're headed into recession. You're still expanding as long as you're above zero, but what really marks or signals a bottoming of GDP is when the estimates are getting beat. We're looking at 2% GDP. The estimates are at 1.4. Growth is coming in stronger than expected, which means, hey, yes, we're slowing, but at some point we might start to pick up. The best way to get reelected, Joe Biden, is more stimulus. Infrastructure bill, $1.2 trillion. Chips Act, $280 billion. This is why semiconductors are exploding. This is why NVIDIA is at all time highs. The Inflation Reduction Act. This is the electrification of the economy. We just got this last week, which is Biden announces a $42 billion high-speed internet initiative. As long as the government keeps spending, there's going to be liquidity into the economy. When economies slow, the only answer is more stimulus. More stimulus means higher asset prices. Yes, if we get a black swan, I think things do fall apart. But when things did fail, all those regional banks that were falling apart, there was a crisis, everybody got scared. And what we saw is that the Fed injected more liquidity into the market. This is the main reason we're not seeing the labor market fall apart. When economies slow, the only answer is more stimulus, right? The answer to slower growth is more cowbell.